what is up you guys back another video you guys have been uh honestly blowing up the last one which has been just awesome the talking about moving to nashville what it's like playing in nashville um missing that hey check this out today i've got this freaking se silver sky man these guitars are killer i'm in a little bit different setting today i've just got this little blues junior sitting behind me um a little more reverb than normal it's right that you know, but this thing does it all, dude. You can get love that little like that. Ha! Huh. Right, some messing around, but dude, this thing is awesome. Um. I want to thank you guys for freaking, for me getting, I don't know, more than 7,000 views on that video is a ton, and there's a ton of new subscribers. People seem to be liking the content, man, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. I've got so much uh, kind of planned, different topics I think I could talk about, and uh, it's just really cool to see that anybody out there is interested in um, any of this. I think it's easy living in Nashville you're around so many people that are doing the same stuff that it's easy to forget that like not everybody is around all of this or doing this all the time. So I hope to be a little window into that world for you guys. And uh, that brings me to topic of this video. I wanna talk about how much do you make doing this? What is pay like in Nashville? What do you make from gigs? How do you make your money? Um, and what I kind of want to do is get into um, what I've made in the past for all different kinds of gigs. I'm not going to get into the specifics of what I make now with Blanco, and it is different. Um, but I've been here for eight years, and uh, I've made a lot of different money from different kinds of gigs all over the place. So just giving you guys a kind of a window of like what you could expect if you're coming here and you're starting out playing. Um, the different type of gigs there are, stuff I know about that I haven't experienced, you know, just like give some of my insight. Uh, so man, what does it look like? So I've been in Nashville eight years, now I play in a band called Lanco that's a country country band. Um, but for a long time I didn't do that and I was just the hired gun guitar player. So whoever would call, I'd, um, I'd pick up the phone, I'd get a gig and this is normally what that looks like. I'll kind of walk you through what the gig, getting a gig looks like and then um, pay and stuff. So for a lot of the cover gigs and stuff, which normally when you first get to town, that's what you're gonna start off um, doing is just hired gun, Broadway, um, or I call it like Broadway but out of town where you're still playing cover sets but you're traveling somewhere to go do what you would do on Broadway in Nashville. Um, and like, so, okay, what does that look like? And like, I'll share with you guys some of my experiences. So normally you refer from a friend or somebody you've met 
before that um, most of the time, if it's your first time getting called, might be in a jam and they need a guitar player and they need one tomorrow. Um, that's how it goes a lot, especially at the beginning, and that's why networking is so important because you're going to get your gigs um, and maintain your gigs through word of mouth and connections you build and people you meet down here. So what does getting like that call look like? And then we'll get to like how much money you make and I'll break down multiple gigs I've played on exactly how much I make doing it um, and give you like a little look into like, okay, here's what like a normal musician would maybe make um, down here playing gigs. So you get a call and like the first call I got, um, first gig I ever did in Nashville was acoustic. It was three songs. The songwriter, she sent me a demo, and it was me playing acoustic. She just sang, um, and a drummer on a, what was it, a cajon? You know, the box thing you hit, whatever that's called. Um, and I remember we showed up for the first rehearsal, and I had charted out the songs. So it goes back to my Nashville number system thing. Of, I listened to it. I sat down with the guitar, and I figured out what key it was in, and then slowly, because I was terrible at it then, figured out what the chord progression was, and they're all were pretty simple. But um, figured that out, charted it, showed up to first rehearsal, got done for three songs, you know. Um, and then I remember leaving the rehearsal, and the artist said, okay, pay-wise, let's talk about pay, and she said, would a hundred bucks be okay? Now, I came from playing music for a long time, all through high school, all through college, and I seldom ever made money at it. I just did it because I loved it. Had my little band in college and stuff. Um, so, a hundred bucks for three songs, I was blown away. I knew it was a paid gig, but I, I, I had no reference. I thought maybe I'd be making like 20 bucks for three songs. I mean, I, I don't know. And I remember I showed up to the second rehearsal, um, which was just us meeting right before the gig, and we ran through the songs one time. And I asked the drummer, I was like, dude, is it normal to get paid this much? And uh, I was so green then. And I remember the guy, uh, the guy kind of scoffed at me. And he goes, well, how much are you getting paid? It's like, okay, <laughs> nice. That's rude. Um, but I was like, well, a hundred bucks. And he's like, yeah. I remember he said, I wouldn't do it for less than that. And I thought, wow, okay. Um, maybe my uh, just sense of how much you should or shouldn't make is off. Now, I will say, looking back on that, 100 bucks for three songs was good. Um, definitely good. We did have a rehearsal. Now, that rehearsal was under an hour. I mean, it's three songs, you know. You just run through it. Um, but I was so green, I was really glad we had a rehearsal because I was nervous for it. I even showed up to the gig with my charts, had charts on the ground to play three songs. Uh, but that was the very first gig I ever got in Nashville. Um, and that artist continued to pay me, most of the time, 50 bucks per gig, and I'd play around with her. Um, and in Nashville, that's just where songwriters, there's normally four songwriters, three, four songwriters on a round. Each person takes turns, sings one song, and it goes around. You know, So each person does a song, then it starts over. Each person does a song, you do that for an hour. So... It was 50 bucks for a while. Sometimes it'd be a little bit different. Um, once we became better friends, uh, there'd be times where she'd just buy me a meal after the gig and buy my a couple beers or something. Um, so that was like my first experience. Now, you can't always expect that. So what's more realistic pay? So I'll go down the line. When I first started, my first gig after that was out of town what I like to call like out of town Broadway, right? Um, and that basically is traveling to play a cover set. And we'd play about three hours of music with at least one break, most of the time with one break. Or we'd do like a 60 minute and a 90 minute set with one break in between, something like that. Um, and when I was traveling then, um, so when you travel, and especially any time in Nashville, I've never been responsible for getting there, for getting gas of any kind or for my lodging. I've never been responsible for that and um, the vast majority of the time you shouldn't be. Um, the artist takes care of that but I did have to pay for any food I wanted, obviously drinks, and at that level there's no catering or you know. If you're lucky the bar will give you um, one meal and if you're really lucky the bar gives you a band tab also and you can buy a couple drinks. Um, which that also goes into a whole other thing of 
trying to, you don't want to be the guy that runs up that bar tab. Uh, but um, I went out, I did that, and I remember the first time I did that, it was, um, I got paid $175 per gig, two nights in a row in Virginia. Um, and at the time, that was awesome money. Now, it was traveling from Nashville to Virginia, left Friday morning, played Friday night, Saturday night, came back Sunday. So it's a time commitment, you know? I mean, if you look at how much you're actually making per hour, when you factor in all those hours, let alone, I had never done a cover gig before, and I got called for this gig on Wednesday. I had two days to learn mm, 45 songs or so. Um, now, songs I've heard, but when you're new to the Nashville thing, the first gigs are going to be the hardest because you might have heard Friends in Low Places, but you haven't played Friends in Low Places. You know, you might have heard friggin' some Folsom Prison or something, but you've never, I'd never played any of that. So I had to spend a ton of time um, learning those songs, stressing intensely over two days, so worried. I showed up to that gig so nervous, no rehearsal. Showed up on a Friday um, in a parking lot of a Walmart, met the guys for the first time, got in the car. It wasn't even a van at that point. It was just a car with a trailer pulled behind it and drove to Virginia. Um, first time I played with them was at Soundcheck. So um, I had my notes, I had some charts, uh, and I did the best I could, and I you know, did good enough. It wasn't perfect, but if you were to extrapolate like 175 per night to over those two nights, that's however much, um, was that like $325, something like that, bad at math. Um, but if you broke down how many hours I spent prepping for that gig, the travel time to it um, and stuff, you know, you're making a really small amount per hour. Uh, and honestly, that's um, pretty typical. Most of my friends at this point now um, would not go out on the road to travel for less than probably $200 Per gig, and then normally, um, as you get just past that level, you'll get a per diem. It might just be twenty bucks a day, but that'll buy you your food, right? Um, and then a lot of times, what's more common than even your meal getting comped is getting a couple drinks free. Honestly, um, but that was like my first gig in Nashville. No per diem, no nothing. Just one hundred seventy-five dollars a show, um, and we'd go out, and I'd do a weekend where I'd do like three shows in a row. Um, and then come back, and at the time, it was great, you know, it was good. Um, I didn't have a lot of commitments here, I didn't have any pets, I was single, I just, you know, it's okay, I can be gone all weekend and make a little bit of money, and it was no big deal. And I loved doing it, you know, I thought I was on top of the world, I was making just enough to pay my rent each month, uh, and getting paid, so that was my experience with like the first, uh, paying gig that I had that was consistently. So I'll fast forward a little bit. I left that gig after maybe three years. I did that for a while um, and the pay was the same the whole time. No tips on that gig also and that's what I'm about to get into. Then I transitioned into playing on Broadway in Nashville. Now I did Broadway heavy on Nashville for about nine months where I was doing it five days a week. Um, and we had the early time slots. So I was playing most of the time the opening slots. So the way it works in Nashville on Broadway is there's um, pretty set time slots that most bars follow. So it's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2 to 6, 6 to 10, 10 to 2. Those are the, the slots for the day. And I was always playing the 10 to 2 in the more 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., which is honestly like the lowest level slot. So how much was I making when I was doing that? I was playing in a one, two, three, four piece band um, and I was making $50 base pay per gig, um, which is not a lot, not a lot. 50 bucks in those gigs are four hours long with no break. Now, if you have to pee, I mean, you can run off and pee really quick, um, but like no actual break. So the thing with those gigs are, on Broadway especially, you're working a lot for tips. So I only made $50 base pay, I was only guaranteed 50, and there were plenty of days where I walked out with 56 bucks or something. Um, but what we did, and a lot of bands do down here, is 20 bucks for a request. And if there's a bunch of people, um, it's 20 bucks for a press. Now, if there's three people in the room and they've been sent listening to you, listening to you, and they ask for a song, 
and we can play it. We're just going to play the song. I mean, you know, then there's no point in saying you got to give me 20 bucks to, you know, you got to read the room a little bit, right? Um, but where we would make money is days where it was packed and we were getting a ton of requests. And I'd literally, I'd get off stage because I'm not much of a singer and the singer would do a couple by himself and I would walk around with the tip bucket and go to every single table or every person I could in the bar and say, what's up guys? I'm here taking tips and requests for the band. Doing 20 bucks for a request. You know, had a little song sheet of ones I we knew we could play, and then if they asked for a different one and we could kind of play it, uh, we'd, we'd try and pull it off. And I promise there was plenty of train wrecks down there. Um, but there you could make better money. So the best days I'd walk out of there was with $250. Um, probably right around there. Maybe it's 280 or whatnot. Those are the, the, the best days. Now, I have friends that play Broadway consistently and play that 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. slot or the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. slot that make a lot more money. Their base pays a little bit higher. And I mean, I've heard stories of guys consistently walking out with 500 bucks a show up to, I mean, I, I've heard crazy stories of people making more than a thousand a man per show and there's some people that do this down here full time that just play on Broadway sometimes play multiple of those time slots a day with different bands and make a really good living doing that now you got to slug it out and if you play two of those time slots that's eight hours of playing eight hours of I mean you know if you do three of them which some people will do that's 12 hours of playing um, so man it's a lot of work and it's a lot of the same songs again and again you know, because we'd have a set where, okay, we played chicken fried early in the set, then an hour in, someone pays us 20 bucks to play it. Okay, we're going to play it again. Then right before we leave, someone paid us 20 bucks again to play it because those people weren't in there when we played it before, so we'd play it again. So if you do that multiple times a day, it could get exhausting, but you can... I know a lot of people that make a, a respectable living, a good living, um, doing that all day. and won't take road work because... $200 for with no tips to go out of town and miss two days on Broadway where they might make four plus hundred dollars per gig um, that they could do on Broadway. It's just not worth it to leave out of town. And that's why it also goes back to in the other video I was talking about managing expectations. You got to decide what you want, you know. Um, Broadway is a great way to just sling it out and you can make great money. And um, it's, it's, it's not... Uh, it's not all the glory. You're not playing for tons of people all the time. I mean, even a packed Broadway room is maybe a couple hundred people, um, with the exception of a couple of the bars. But you can make a really good living. And if you love doing that, then you can do that. You could have a full-time normal job and then have a consistent 6 to 10 slot. Get done with your normal job and go down and play 6 to 10, five nights a week. You're going to be making great money between the two of those. Great money. And you get to play every day. You know, what's wrong with that? I always wanted to play big stages. I wanted to be in front of a lot of people. Um, I wanted to be on a tour bus and all that, all that stuff a lot of people want. And I sacrificed in the beginning a lot of money on Broadway to take opportunities that would be artist gigs on the road, maybe original music for a lot less pay. Um, but to me, I just enjoyed more. So to each their own there, you know, but that's a little look at like Broadway and how much you can make. Um, now, after that, I started touring with an artist where we were traveling consistently, um, but playing all original music, original shows, and they're opening up for a little bit bigger acts. The shows were a little bit bigger, more packed, all original music. Um, and this was my pay breakdown for that. Um, this is where you start getting into more like the mid tier. Like I know a lot of guys that wouldn't work for less than um, what I'm about to talk about right now. So with that, um, I'd make $250 a show. I'd get $50 a day per diem, which that is really rare. That was just a a lucky case. $50 a day per diem is a, is a good slot. Um, my pay is is very different now with Lanco, but um, even the per diem is still not $50 a, a day. So that was unique. Um, and then we'd make um, 150 per rehearsal. So that 
was a good gig, you know? You go out, you play three shows in the weekend, 250 per show, every day you're gone, 50 bucks a day. Oh, and that gig would come with $100 for a full travel day. So if we left with that gig, often we'd leave a full day early and I'd get paid $100 to be on the road for that day, then 250 for the gig, um, you know, and then if we did three shows, it's 250 each weekend. Um, also, once you got to that level, everybody's different. You know, on Broadway, I was getting paid cold, hard cash. Um, when I was doing travel stuff before, I was getting Venmoed a lot. Um, with that gig, I was like a 1099 employee. Um, and I just every two weeks would get a paycheck. And that paycheck would have the money on whatever work we had done. And that, that business was run really well and, and still is. Um, so that's a couple different levels to talk about. Now there's levels past that. Um, I have friends that I know that are on um, salaries. Um, there's people that just are paid per show but make a lot more per show with a bigger act. And you know, this is what's interesting. It's, it's um, I think about this a lot. It's almost unfair, um, honestly, because as you get on a bigger gig, you're paid more. Your amenities are better. Your travel is better. You do less work. I'm paid more now, and I don't have to set up my guitar or tear down my guitar. When I'm done with the show with Lanco, I get off stage, and I don't go back on stage. And I don't see my instruments again sometimes until we land in, in Nashville if we're flying. Um, and if we're on the bus, I don't see them again until the next day at soundcheck. Um, and it is unfair as a, in a way that uh, as you move up those levels... Your, your work narrows into just playing guitar and putting on a great performance and I'm there just to play. Um, and, uh, you know, there's consistent catering now. We have a rider at every show. That, and a rider is in the green room. There's certain snacks and alcohol that we've listed that are there for us. So I don't pay for any drinks. I don't have to pay for a lot of meals. Um, you know, and it's a unfair in a way because before I was making less money I was paying for all my food I wasn't getting any drinks I was unloading the trailer loading the trailer helping the drummer set up I mean you know and maybe that's some of paying your dues and stuff but it's just some things to think about you know there's a, a, a lot that goes into it and um, you know as you go up um, you're either gonna get paid more per gig or if you're with a bigger act for long term you'll probably just be put on a salary for the year because um let's say let's say you're making 500 bucks a show um and that band is going to play 160 dates that year you know do the math that's a lot of money so from a business standpoint the band's going to be like well we'll put you on salary instead of paying you 200 grand this year you know um so, and then consistent paycheck and, and, and stuff really branches out. But at least at the beginning level, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of like a look on like, okay, what does pay look like? The cold hard numbers of like what I was taking home. Now, here's another really important part to this. And a part I almost forgot to mention, I'm just now thinking of it, man, uh, is now my pay works different now. I have direct deposit and taxes are taken out. Before when I was getting paid, your taxes, when I'm just getting venmo when I'm getting cash on Broadway, your taxes are not taken out. You're, you're just a contractor, so you're getting the full amount. And my first couple years in Nashville, that really burned me when it came time to be like, oh, I have to do this thing called taxes. And being like, oh, wait, I didn't save any money. And you don't get money back, then you owe money because you've been making non-taxed income all year. Um, so that's a really strong point to, if you're first coming down here to think about, you know, pick a percentage and maybe out of every time you get paid, take that out. And I know that's so hard to do. Trust me, I know. Um, but that's something that can really come back and bite you really bad. Um, and yeah, man, honestly, it's the Wild West out there. I've had to chase down money before. Um, I've had to wait months to get paid. Um, I've never... As far as I can remember, I've never not gotten paid. Um, I've done stuff for free before for friends or for certain things. Yeah, that's fine. But I've never been promised money and never gotten it. Now, it, I have had a couple instances where it was more than a month before I got the money, which is a uh, terrible. But you know, there's all different kinds of gigs, and you gotta hustle, right? Like I, 
Um, was just talking about this in this last video, but I, I play with Lanco. We have a consistent thing going. It's great. I love it. Um, the other night, I played at Puckett down here on Broadway, a little um, restaurant, people sitting and listen to you play, and I made 50 bucks for the gig and 50 bucks for the rehearsal, plus tips, um, which I think I made 36 bucks in tips. So two Fridays ago, I walked away with 136 bucks, had to learn at least 20 songs for that, had one rehearsal. So, you know, it's, um, all that to say, you gotta really love to do this because you're gonna have to hustle and play a lot of gigs if you wanna be able to just pay your rent, let alone make like a good living. Um, and it is a little unfair that um, you gotta work a lot harder at the lower levels. Um, you have to work hard at every levels, but like the type of work is just different, you know? Like I said, now I'm paid a lot more to like focus on my instrument, to focus on putting on a great performance, to be clear-minded, to get up there, to play great, to look great, sound great, you know, all, all the stuff. Um, but before, you know, I've been in so many instances where we're pulling up 20 minutes late to the gig. We just drove 11 hours that day to get up to Nebraska. I set up, I'm helping the drummer set up really quick. I plug in the quickest, crappiest sound check you've ever heard while the bar has people in it. And you say, go, play for three hours. Okay, here we go. Then I'm, you know, so, uh, man, there's all different types of levels and stuff, but it's a ton of fun, and uh, it's, you know, some people were asking, like, how much do I make? I had one message from uh, one of you guys that was uh, asking, like, I've got, uh, he has a son, he's looking to move to Nashville, and that's just a factor of saying, how realistic is it that I, I have to provide for my son, I have to feed my son and stuff, what can I, you know, and, um, the route for that might be off the bat going full-time Broadway. Get down on Broadway, you're gonna make more money, you're at home, you're not traveling, um, you're playing cover gigs all day, and you're not gonna be playing to 5,000 people, but you make a great living. Doing what you love with a great band, loud guitar, 20 minutes from home, 10 minutes from home, you know, you can't beat that. So there's a lot of opportunity here, a lot of opportunity for all kinds of work, and, um, if I could say anything, it's just, you know, you gotta hustle. I still have to hustle now. Um, I haven't just, like, made it, you know? Uh, but I, I love the position I'm in, and I've been hustling for a long time uh, and playing, and, you know, at the beginning, you might have to take gigs that um, you don't love. In fact, let me touch on this last point before I'm gonna end the video. Um, in Nashville, there's this thing, like, musicians say, um, and, there's three factors to any gig, and uh, you've got to have at least two of these factors to make it worth your time and your energy. Okay, so what is it? It's either good people, good music, or good pay, right? And the rule of thumb is you want to have two of those on a gig, right? So maybe it's, um, it could be any combination of those. Maybe it's great people in great pay, but you don't like the music at all, right? Maybe it's uh, great music, great people, terrible pay. Do you do it because it's fulfilling, you know? So those are three things that you can kind of use to look at a situation. And when you first get down here, you're gonna get called for stuff where you don't know anything but the pay. And then you'll get a set list, but you don't know the people. And uh, you gotta take a lot of gigs that aren't gonna have two of those things all the time. But once you start getting into it and you start being a little more selective and you're getting called more and you have to say no to certain things because certain things conflict, you know, that's a great three-way thing to, uh, I don't know, kind of guide you, if you will, right? Um, it's either good music, good people, or good money. And if you somehow hit the jackpot, you'll have all three. Um, and that is possible, I promise. So anyways, you guys, I'll tell you what, the, the influx of people on this channel has been so cool. And uh, I, I've really been enjoying reading all your guys' comments. I'm trying to answer them and stuff. Uh, I'm not used to getting like so many, especially on YouTube, like versus TikTok, everyone's on their phone. But on YouTube, I think a lot of people are on their computer. So the comments are longer and a lot deeper, which I enjoy. But um, it takes more time to try and give a genuine response to all of them. But 
Man, I can't thank you guys enough. I'm super pumped about this channel. I've got, I'm headed to Tempe, Arizona tomorrow, play with Lanco. And I think I'm gonna try and just do a little uh, low production quality vlog video. Let's take my phone around, I'm gonna show you guys what a day on the road, flying out to Tempe. We fly in tomorrow, I play tomorrow night, I fly back Sunday morning. Um, just kind of document that little series and what it's like. So I've got some other great teaching stuff planned. I think I have some good kind of sit down interview things planned and then just more talking about like what life is like, giving you guys a peek behind the curtain, kind of in the the, the production style or whatnot of like Tom Bukovac, the homeschool and stuff of just throwing this up. I can't play like him and I don't have any of the credits he has, right? But the goal is then to show you from that raw perspective, someone that's maybe a little closer to where you're at, right? Because let's be real, none of us are gonna be Tom Bukovac, right? But I love his channel. Apparently a lot of people do. So anyways, man, if you guys enjoy the video, hit the subscribe. I'm so pumped. My goal by the end of the year was getting to 300 subscribers. And at the time of filming this, I'm on my way to almost 500, which is awesome. Already crushed that. So maybe the goal by the end of this year is 1,000. I love doing this. I've been a part of this community for so long. I watch so much of the content. So it, it's really exciting to be like, I'm going to throw my hat in here and just like, I don't know, share my experiences. So, you know, no cuts or edits. Now the little blog video will have some obviously. Um, but yeah, so tell me what you guys think. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe thing. I'm not going to say hit the bell because no one hits the bell. One guy said he hit the bell, and I appreciate that one person. But, uh, man, I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time, peace.